Alright, welcome. Uh, today is July 31st, 2016, and we are having a free Metaphysics of Healing class, Metaphysics of Healing. And I have with me um, Michelle, Shirley, Star, and Uliana. Welcome, everybody. And um, prepare your questions. I intended, if you don't mind, to, to have more of discussion and less of monologue. But yes, I will start with monologue. Allah Welcome to the class. I intended to be a series of classes. Uh, some of them will be free, some of them will be paid. You have now a new, a new registration system on uh, humancolony.org so people can actually sign up with the class pay and uh, reserve spaces and it's all more or less automatic so far. Uh, just the first first run will be a few a few days from now. We have a, a class, a class with Jim. First class will be channeling class with Jim. Then uh, end of August I think will be the uh, Reiki one a class and then next will be Reiki 1B class and then we'll keep repeating the classes channeling and Reiki classes and hopefully we'll bring more teachers so I, I, I intended to be I have a vision I intended to grow I also have got messages from different sources that we 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 should build a community bigger and we should help other communities to start so that is the divine plan for next years and uh, that would be the salvation for the earth. So we unite with other communities, learn from other communities and grow and do our healing classes and channeling classes and other spiritual gatherings. Right? Uh, the healing plays a an interesting role in, in this. Um, the that's a miracle for sure. We do spiritual healing. It is a proof of spirituality at your fingertips. When you start doing the healings, when you heal with energy, when you heal with chant and other ways, it's it's a miracle what is happening. It's not physical. It's not anything third dimensional. It's higher dimensional miracles coming through. So it's a miracle from third dimensional perspective and it is absolutely natural for the fourth dimensional perspective, higher dimensional perspective. So you just wake up to your higher dimensional nature and express itself. And it is natural in terms of development. It is natural in terms of development. So the main understanding of today is that all of us are a different steps at different levels on the same path. We all start from the root chakra. We are born, actually not born, we are conceived and the root chakra is the first chakra which is the part of the fetus. It's first activated chakra, it's survival. Feeding secretion and survival. And then it grows into the second chakra and then it grows in the third chakra. And then most of the humanity still plays the games of the first three chakras. Our eight of higher four chakras. So the first level of human development is to learn to communicate. And it is the root, the root chakra. It's a physical worker which strives to be able to socialize. And the main aspiration for them is to be able to communicate. So they just learn to speak. 
Um, and then, and you do it in, in in every every one of us does does that part through the lifetime. So we go through the just starting to speak from survival, screaming, and uh, just desiring to eat and uh, breathe and secrete. We go into communication. So for most people, it happens in very early childhood, right? Second chakra is activated early. It is. Communication, 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 and that is much of humanity manifests this and practices this through marketing, sales, talks, chat, nonsense, advertising, television, radio, all of that is small talk. Small talk is second chakra activity. Blah 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 blah. Mostly for for developed intelligent person, it's it's like it's painful. It's low vibrational nonsense, which is painful. You basically filter it out. But for some, it is it is their level of activity level. That's what gets them excited. That's what gets them learn their second level lessons lessons. And then you, the the highest development for them is to graduate into a manager. <laughs> Right to a manager, to become a manager, to have power, and some of us still are won that. Some of us still graduating into a manager and thinking that this is oh that was be exciting to have the willpower, third chakra willpower, and have others follow that will. So the power games, and again, it's much of the humanity playing that. It is warriors, managers, supervisors. Hierarchy, even animals play that, you know, pack hierarchy. So, third chakra animal activity, dogs and, you know, any other pack animals, hierarchical animals. Mm. So, that's second nature to, to get first in line, to get on the top of the hill, to, and, you know, all government, all religious hierarchy, you know, all of that is still third chakra activity. Even family hierarchy. So you practice your third chakra activity. So that's old humanity, and it played that for a few thousand of years, starting from the fall of Atlantis. So that's our games, and we are stuck here. So that's the main idea of. Yeah, prepare your questions, write them down so you don't forget. The main idea of Buddhism, Hinduism that we are stuck in the lower level lessons and we need to get out of it. And then the healing comes. So the healing is the heart chakra activity. Reiki healing, energy healing. When you use your hand to heal, when you use to, your heart energy to heal, when you use empathy, intuition, people say, you know, go from your mind to your heart. Think with your heart. Don't use your logic. Think with your heart. Listen to your heart. Speak with your heart. It's uh, the first four-dimensional activity. And the veil is, is the veil of diaphragm. It separates the belly from the higher organs. So the heart is above the diaphragm. And that's <clears throat> that is what is blocked in much of, it, of the humanity. It is traditional in Western and Eastern cultures to <clears throat> to block the heart chakra, to repress the trust. So, I Americans are already graduated. Many Americans, much of the American educational system is learned to not to block the heart chakra. They love children, respect children, they don't repress them much. Not all of that, but there are nice teachers, nice schools where children are not are treated as adults respectfully and when the trust is not broken. But <clears throat> uh, here in San Diego I see a little bit of Mexican culture and the lesson of breaking trust is number one. They say something to you and then ha 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 they tricked you. So that is 
as simple as don't trust adults, don't trust anyone. You know, we're just joking. I mean, it's it's nice, but still, it's repression of the heart chuck, repression of trust. I remember as a child, I was so what's that word? Unlimitedly trusting every stranger. I tried to treat them as a friend, and I'm still trying. But at that time, it was just crazy. I would talk to anyone about anything. There was no understanding that I should keep any secrets. I still have that kind of repressed, but but you know, then you are taught by the life to block your heart chakra. And now when I do Reiki, especially to Asians, the heart chakra is cold. It's like, you know, levels and levels of blockages. The Russians, especially Russian males, have heart chakra traditionally blocked. No trust, no compassion. Anything else except trust and compassion. Logic, righteousness, but nothing trust. So, so opening the heart chakra in this world is art because because there is still so much darkness coming through it. So you open it but still keep it filtered so you don't get hurt. And uh, m mostly all of you who are here come from alien worlds when open char heart chakra is is normal. So you come with open heart chakra and you find it difficult to function here. So for many of you, it's 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 not how to open it, but but how to survive with 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 um, it being open, right? So some people come from lots of earthly past lives, and some of you come from lots of alien past lives. So again, you have to find find what is your challenge. For some, it is learning to open it, and for some of it is learning to filter, to stay, to keep it open and to survive with it open. So so if you come from the tradition where you were telepathic, empathic, and and um, human life surprises you, then, then it's a different lesson. You have to learn the 3D life. So some come from 4D to 3D and learn 3D life, and some come from 3D to 4D, and you have to learn 4D life. And in any way, it's, it's how to filter things, and Still, still being able to to function and to grow. Now, fifth chakra is telepathy, empathy, hearing, and speaking. Hearing and speaking. And here you see there is a little difference between the dif the distance between the center of the brain and ears, and center of the brain and throat. There is a difference. And actually, don't know which which of the connections counts, but there is a frequency difference. The brain knows just by the by the distance, by the frequency, which vibration comes to the ears and which vibration comes to the mouth. But each chakra is defined by the frequency between the brain and through the nerves, through the spine to the to the chakra and as you understand, there are chakras in between, so it's all the frequency defined by the distance. And that div division into seven ch chakras is coming from outside of Earth. It's traditional human division. It's, uh, it's from other humans from outside of Earth, from aliens, from our ancestors. But it is artificial, and it is artificial, but because it is so ancient, it is in our design. It is something embedded in our design. And the seven idea of seven also is spread to the idea of seven days of the week and um, seven notes, white notes on the keyboard, and remind me what what else. There are a few other sevens in in, in the human. Uh, culture, but they are not very natural. It is artificial. <clears throat> uh, the original idea of castes was not uh, inheritable. It's more like for you to understand where, you are, what's your dominant chakra, and ask yourself what is your dominant favorite color, which makes you happy. And usually that would correspond to your dominant chakra. Not not that you don't have other chakras working, but there is one dominant. So. Interestingly, 
the top chakra, violet, and the bottom chakra, red. They make a circle, and violet goes right onto the red. So if you have something in between red and violet, you don't really know if it is top or bottom because it's, it's a loop closed. Right? Right. Okay, so, and that corresponds to channeling and speaking and hearing the voices, communicating to the higher levels of, of reality through their words and spirits. And then the last one is, is it the last one? Not the last one. The sixth one is getting the ideas and understanding. The third eye, visions and understanding. And then the crown is direct line to high levels, to God, to highest levels of spirit. Um, so it's natural for you to graduate from lowest three to highest four and have them all four working in harmony. And it's ancient knowledge that, let me see, we need three fingers here and you need... No, actually four chakras here and three chakras here. So the ancient knowledge is that three bottom chakras are looking inside. They are... How do you say? They make you feel like you are separate from the matrix, separate from the reality, that you are by yourself. So the people with three dominant bottom chakras, they have real difficulty understanding the concept of any psychic work, any higher dimensional chakras. So for them, the world is very materialistic. So first three chakras, materialistic. But then anybody can graduate in higher chakras, and then they realize, oh, the world is not materialistic. It's all one. You are one with everything. You're connected with everything. And first you feel feel like the heart chakra, you feel things, but then you graduate in a, being able to affect the outside reality with your mind. So you become the near from the matrix, the magician who just can think, think the things into existence. Law of attraction starts working with higher chakras. Basically, you graduate into yeah, manifesting. It's called manifesting. So manifesting through just inner work. You work, you do inner work, and things outside of you start changing. So where does healing comes here? It becomes as soon as you open your higher chakras and you get to the vibrational level of higher chakras, you are becoming a healer, a more powerful healer, a more pow powerful powerful healer and it is natural it's it is uh, you just remember it when you were Lemurian Atlantean alien that's what was natural for you so you just remember it recall it and uh, return to it and then when you share it with others it helps the ascension the idea is that you, the humanity upgrades to higher chakra activity. It's a program. It's a program upgrade. It's a new vibrational program. It's a new server, new new server, new uh, operating system. And it's individual and collective. You can operate on the new system. You have access to these codes and you upgrade your whole game plan, the whole experience to the new to the new vibration, but you also help the whole humanity, the whole global human collective to upgrade to the new system. And then there is a split of timelines, basically the ones who like to play this game, they play this game, and the ones who don't like this game, they fade out, die out. It will take generations, so basically New incarnations have an option to play the four-dimensional reality. They will play that option. And um, some who don't choose to incarnate in four-dimensional reality, they just don't. They incarnate elsewhere. But the, 
the reality is being upgraded next 100, 200 years, the Earth will, uh, will be upgraded. And uh, we get a lot of help from aliens on different levels, from angels on different levels of our existence, from higher divine forces to get this upgrade. And it's your choice, but you can choose to play along and uh, participate in this upgrade of the of the reality. So that was a little introduction for hmm, about 20 minutes. And now I invite questions and sharings and in, you know self introductions. Oliana, I'm sorry, it's um try to just get very like that that distance from microphone because the, the sound is completely muffled. I was okay. trying to what yep. is the Gradually the chakras. So you recommend some techniques uh, if a person is stuck in lower chakras. What do you do? Oh, great question. How do you unblock your heart? Oh, their heart or your heart? Okay. How do you unblock your heart? I mean, me, how, what is the technique to unblock it? Right. So the other two questions. One is how to deal with people who are stuck in the three lower chakras, right? And if you personally stuck, I mean me, uh -huh. that, how to graduate with higher chakras? How do you do that? Right. Uh, absolutely, yes. First is to understand you're, you're not all the time there. Every, like during the day, during minutes, hours, weeks, you go up and down, up and down. So sometimes you have to. It's practical to stay in your lower chakras, especially when you deal with materialistic people. You just have to. Like family, friends, work. You, ca you have to come there block your higher chakras and come there with your lower three and you know do physical work do talking work do computer work do your managerial work and if they notice that you're using your higher chakras they get spooked right you're not you're not allowed to be psychic there you're not allowed to read their mind and if you do you have to pretend that you don't right so it's okay to be there and you know, uh, washing dishes, and the same at the same time, you go to sleep, you go to meditation, and you you're right back to your divine shape, uh, vibration. So every night you go there, and all chakras are alive, and and when you wake up. It happens that you just lose your dreams. You want to hold onto them, but they slip away, and you don't remember it. And it, you don't remember because you descend, descend from higher to lower, and whatever was real there is not that cannot exist in third-dimensional reality. That's why you lose it. It's not because you forget it, just because you can't comprehend their nature of that dream when you're on the lower level. So the only way for you to remember the dreams is to translate it into words and then bring back the words and then, oh, you understand the words. But if it's if it's understanding, not translated to words, you cannot bring it down. Okay, that's the first understanding. Second understanding is if you, what is this word? Hang around, hang around as we do here, hang out, 
with higher dimensional people, higher spirituality people. They just lift you up. Like you go to a healer session and first thing the healer does, they lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, and then you just yeah, there. So use gurus, healers, helpers. What did you want to say? Uh, I agree with you, right? Thank you. Uh, yes, so you don't have to be in that high state all the time. If your natural state, uh, if your natural state is whatever, 3.5, right in between, uh, staying in the 5, 6, and 7 much of the time will drain you, basically. I, I remember that, you know, for me to, to go and do the Reiki or go to do whatever higher activity, it was a huge concentration, pushing, focusing, which drained energy. So I had to, like, push myself up, stay there for a short while, and then fall down. And this fall down was painful. So as you build proper systems there in your either astral, ether astral bodies, it becomes natural. You just open the connections. And as you practice, it becomes natural. It becomes hard to be lower, but, you know, like your seven, your, your level becomes 4.5, higher higher heart, and that's what would be your natural happy state, and it's it's where your your favorite color changes. Your you become more tolerant to say violet color or purple color, and uh, it makes you more happy. And um, so it's 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 ripening gardening process, ripening and gardening. So. Tools are, Reiki is our favorite tool, yoga is the same thing, just Reiki is when you do it to others and, and self, and yoga is mostly you just do it to yourself, but it is the same energy, same practice, and there is so many layers of yoga and so many varieties of energy healing around Reiki. And meditation is... Uh, is the second very parallel and important. You intend, you pray, and um, you just lift up, stay there, come back, lift up, and you know, do it as breathing. It becomes natural. So now, some days I have to like really meditate for at least half an hour or three times a day because otherwise I just cannot function. And to meditate three times a day, it's really hard to have eight hour, you know, how do you call it, eight hour working day. You have to like sneak out, do your meditation, come back. You really can't meditate sitting in front of the computer. At least it's it's not easy. I never I never succeeded with that. I go to the car, turn the, my air conditioner on and you know, get my senses blocked with eyes blocked and ears blocked with um, earmuffs and, and do the meditation. <sighs> Comments and questions. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. No sound. Okay. Star. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yes. Something I came across that also helps with meditation is mudras or madra. Like okay. that. Very simple, very effective from what I've researched into it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I'm researching it for myself, being ADD diagnosed. And there's certain hand positions for that. Retreat from a crowd, and you can isolate yourself within two seconds. From what I've seen on YouTube and through people who showed it to me. Absolutely, yes. So, um, another tool at our disposal. Thank you. Absolutely, yes. Uh, recently, I, I just learned that chanting, just OM is sufficient. Just, uh, just one simple sound. If you intended to carry 
the invitation to the divine. It is, it is very efficient, especially nowadays. You know, every day you get a lesson, tons of lessons, and uh, people serve your teachers by trying to upset you. And uh, news come which tend to like get you out of the bliss. And now I just learned, you know, oh, oh, something terrible is going to happen. I have terrible fear, panic attack, and um, oh, no, and I invite the divine guidance, divine help, and it practically work. It's very practical. I, I just read the story. I, I don't know. It's it's it sounds like. It sounds like unreal, but it is. Now I understand it's very, very, very real. It happens to me like almost daily. Like uh, yogis here in California were building uh, a monastery, and they weren't using proper safety techniques, and uh, people were surprised that they are not ge getting hurt. And uh, someone saw like uh, a yogi was climbing the ladder, tall ladder, and um, wasn't called careful and he started falling fall down and and then he miraculously was able to catch the ladder and get get back on it and climb again <clears throat> and uh, he told that you know the only had he, for the fraction of the second when he was falling down he was inviting divine intervention and uh, singing om you know it will be a fraction of the second om but it was the intention that that he did and it and he was just grabbed and placed back on the ladder. And uh, that happens to me now daily. <laughs> you just feel, oh, that is terrible. Something terrible is going to happen. You know, I give up my uh, fate to the Divine Mother and, uh, and invite her help. And then that changes the reality. The reality just kind of turns, turns a little bit. And the... You just see the other fa faucet, the other angle, and um, you accept it, and somehow it just becomes less scary. <sighs> Words are um, powerful, Max. Yes? What? I said words are powerful. Knowing yes. a thing is going to be terrible is not my favorite thing to do, because then in something, then I invite that. <laughs> um because we were talking about the mudra and the mantra, even om, I don't know about other people, but sound healing is part of my path. So what I will find is sometimes there will be a situation that arises where I feel discomfort, which could be likened to anxiety or fear or anger or something. Um, and my body will automatically shift into a a sound, or also a very nice way to distract your one's mind from latching onto a thing that is low vibrational, like maybe a situation that you want to play around and around and have like angry feelings or sad feelings or mad feelings or bad feelings about. Um, I found mantras are amazing for kind of neutralizing space. So, like, pick one. I don't know. Satanama, Om Namah Shivaya, Nam Sa, Om. Anything, anything. It doesn't really matter. You could count to eight, you know. And pick a sound. I found it very helpful. Wonderful, thank you. Yes. Um, when I mentioned Divine Mother, it's again something new that came to me. It was kind of presented to me many times, but um, it is a Hindu ancient understanding of feminine aspect of God and um, masculine aspect of God. And um, the initial layer of the divinity, which is silence, and complete peace, complete um, 
non-movement is considered to be masculine. And then on top of that, there is a creative component, which is giving birth, right? Feminine component, giving birth to things. So the creative part of the creator is, is feminine. It's a mother. It gives birth to things. And uh, praying to this creative component, one of the names for it would be Kali, um, is, uh, is easy because that connection to your mother is, is, is very natural. And you relate to God as a mother, nurturing, creative, uh, healing, and it's just one of the doors that opened, and um, it feels very natural to me. Also, the same mother is same beloved, and same daughter, and same grandmother. So the the whole range of divine wife, even so, the whole range of uh, divine lover, all range of uh, feminine aspects united into God becomes a very easy road to to God, right? And um, the Christian Divine Mother is also an aspect of that, so you can uh, you can reconnect again to, to that to that path to to God, right? So so that that is a nice prayer these days starts with gratitude continues with invitation and ends up with a gratitude. So thank you. I invite help. Thank you. That's that, that easy. Yes. So you were, I, I think the idea of this Michelle, was to... Michelle, you're muted. No, I'm not. Michelle, you're muted. I'm not. Are you? No. Or, uh, me. Hmm. Can you hear me? I guess I'm not supposed to ask it. <laughs> Forget it. Either I do to do I I type it. I can't hear anything. I guess I'm not supposed to ask it. Oh. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. Well, Max can't because he's gone. <laughs> Okay, before he comes back, isn't this, is this supposed to be about, he's ex supposed to be explaining to us the metaphysics behind the healing. Okay, we need to keep on topic. <laughs> All right. So, I'm just going to ask you guys, are you guys also healers, everybody? No. Not, not yet. No. <laughs> not yet. Everybody is a healer. Everybody, we all have the capacity to be a healer. Um, there are many methods, there are many ways to become a healer, and you don't have to literally probably do anything more than just say, I'm willing. <laughs> I'm willing to be a conduit of energy. But I think you have the hands-on type of healing. Can you hear me? Well, I am a Reiki, I'm an Asui Holy Fire Reiki Master teacher, so yes, I've gone to all my classes and I've done all my practices, but I do never touch anybody when I heal because that's just my intuition. Mm -hmm. So, a funny story related to that since I don't know what Max is doing. So, I was at a Reiki show this week and I worked on an acquaintance of mine and he got up from the table and said, what did you just do? And I said, well, I'm just a conduit for energy. And he goes, there was literally an Egyptian woman working on me. <laughs> and I was like, well, it doesn't surprise me because nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> and so anyway, that came up. 
it's always like in threes it'll be so he said that and I also worked on somebody who brought up Lumeria and galactic languages etc it was just a very interesting thing. but, but um, I was anyway going, I was going to say when when, when someone asks are you here? wait hold on I'm gonna mute Max because it's very loud Ugh. I can't mute Max <laughs> okay yeah I did okay what did you say uh, when someone asks whether someone else is a healer, um, are they asking, like, are you a healer as in, because healing comes in all different forms, doesn't it? You can just smile to someone, you can um, hold an old person, yes. um, you, can, you can say a kind word, yes. um, and you don't know what seed you plant, so that's healing. And otherwise, you also have these hands on you, you know, if someone mm -hmm. comes to you, they want to you, you put them on the bed, and you heal. So when someone asks you what type of healer, or are you a healer, are, are, they, are they referring to, are you the type of healer, are you a... I think they're asking you if you have, like, some concept that you know you heal that you have the power to heal. Like, that's what I mean when I ask a person a question. Like, I literally got telepathed by this girl. She was, like, came over to me. I was at a concert, and she came over, and she, I was meditating, and I was sending toning for healing at the concert. So I was just sitting there, and she could see that I was so high vibrational. She was like, here, smell this thing. And she put, she's like, it's very grounding. And then she danced around me with sage. And then she telepathed I needed water and brought me a bottle of water. Yeah. <laughs> this is very weird. And yeah. so I said, how did you know? And I said, are you a healer? And she went, and I yeah. said, okay, I got it. We get it. Yeah, so... But when I first learned of Reiki, I thought it was like only for super special people and you had to be like perfect or something and it was magic and it is magic, it's beautiful. But I didn't know, but my Reiki practitioner told me that everyone has this capacity and so I sought that path. I do other things also because there's lots of parallel past future lives in which I'm also a healer so my body knows things right like I didn't study it I don't I've never studied toning period but I do it all the time um, I don't know why my version of Reiki looks like a beautiful dance and everybody else has their hands on places on the body you know <laughs> I don't know. I just follow my intuition. Yeah. Try to be a clear channel. Yeah. So what did you say you do, Michelle? What kind of Reiki? Um, I studied my I studied the holy fire, Usui. Usui holy fire. And I also did Max and Jim's Galactic Reiki which like I think really amped it up also. There are lots of different kinds of Reiki, like thousand plus. Like there's angel Reiki, which I would say I do that too because I tone angels. There could be, you know, I mean, there's. it doesn't really matter. The intention is I am a conduit. I am a conduit for healing love. Love is healing. Here is my willingness to also share it with others, okay? Here's my willingness. And it changes your heart. Gosh, my heart just wants everybody to have love and healing. You know, um, that is a really beautiful thing about studying Reiki. Reiki is very heart-centered healing. It is very loving. It is very loving. And how does Kundalini Reiki work? Okay, what? I don't. I don't know yet. I'm. I did get initiated into it, but I haven't studied it yet, so I don't know yet. Also, there's a Karuna Reiki I want to also be um, yeah. learning, and also. 
That's Egyptian, isn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> but the lady but the lady I met at the at the group thing is Karuna and she likes my healing, so we're gonna she's gonna do me teach me also. Help me. Oh, is Karuna Hawaiian? Maybe it's a different one that look at Max is just sitting back there. Looking to me, but there's there's a there's an Egyptian type of Reiki. Isn't there? Great question. I don't know. I think okay. I think I might have some of that, but I don't know how or why exactly. I don't know what it is. I just like it was funny because my instructor, my here where I live at the Reiki session, all the other Reiki people were like, what is that you just did? And I was like, I don't know, it's just my intuition. <laughs> it's what I do, I just move, because I move the energy, like whatever, my hands, it's like they do, they want to do snakes sometimes, they want to do helixes, like DNA, they want to like have a tornado, pulling up your stuff straight to source, like, you know, different. I don't really know. My hands want to do like weird twist and turn your knobs too. Wow. Like, <laughs> so, so I just do whatever it comes. I don't really know. Like, I was, it's very fluid though, and it feels beautiful. And doing it, it's very. It's not something somebody taught me. It's just no. what happens. Natural. It's natural. Yeah. Well, that's what it feels like. I um, like it a lot. Mm, I do it uh, some of it a little bit. I stopped doing much of it because I just discovered that if I do it wrong, I, um, it gives a headache to the person. So you have to be like in the flow, in the zone to do it right. Um, What's the, what, sorry, what is this that you're talking about, Matt? Exact, uh, let's give it a name. Uh, it's it's a Qigong, Qigong oh, yeah. type of healing so when you in Reiki in classical Reiki you hold the hand in, in place and don't move much either in the air or on the on the person and in Qigong you move the hands all the time you accumulate the energy and push it or pull it and manipulate in alien Reiki also you, you do a lot of that um, I experience on myself my I have a wonderful healer now her name is Reina here in San Diego and um, I go to her every week, and uh, she's very advanced, and her routine is that, um, let me mute, maybe that, hold on, there is a feedback. I, I will mute you for, for a second, because, yeah, that helps. So, uh, their um, routine is, she does first first part of the healing Chinese, traditional Chinese pulse diagnostics, so measure the pulse. Then uh, traditional Reiki, you go from the head to, 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 to the feet, gradually placing hands. And uh, in addition, in parallel to that, she does acupuncture points, she just connects to them. And it's amazing how she um, finds the places which are most painful. Like, you know, I don't feel any pain, right? And then she would connect to a certain point, and it feels very painful. And then she would connect to two points, and they all feel painful. And even she removes the hands, and I touch there, it's still painful. She just finds these meridian points which are out of balance and connects to them. So connects to unbalanced meridian points. When I say meridian points, it's acupuncture points which are located on the same meridian. And usually it would be either liver or spleen or some other meridians. Um, she does the no regular Reiki, then flips me over, and flips comes from Lakesh. You know, she, 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 he was doing Reiki on me, and he said, flip, and I didn't get it. What, what does it mean? You know, he would just want me to turn on, a, on, 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 the, on the stomach. Um, so you flip the patient over, and then you work on the back the same thing, finding the meridians and doing Reiki, and then, and then she would when I'm still 
still on my back. She would do something in the air, which is actually Qigong type of energy manipulation. And I really open eyes because I don't want to disconnect from that bliss. But basically that bliss, you know, sometimes I, I, I get on the other side right away, like in a couple of minutes I'm on the other side, I'm in the bliss, I'm in the elevated state. And sometimes when she does Reiki, I find myself still thinking about my business, 3D life, problems, science, and all of that. And even if I try to stop it, it's still like blah, 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 it works. And sometimes I fight it, I try to not to think, but sometimes I think maybe as she works and I think about important things, maybe it will heal the reality too. So it doesn't really mean that I have to block it. Maybe right now she works on my liver and my liver thinks about my, you know, that kind of problem in business, science, work, home, it, relationships. And, and maybe she, I'm supposed to think it as she does it so it heals that. And anyway, when she does the Qigong manipulation, which is dance in the air, and the most beautiful dance of hands in the air you can find, it's uh, the Legend of Korra anime series, the Legend of Korra, K-O-R-R-A, you have to watch it. It's ingeniously painted by Korean uh, animators and they know, know what they're doing. It's Asian type of Qigong. And uh, that, that kind of movement of hands, very beautiful. It's all over the place, but especially it is there when she goes in the spirit world and there is a way to uh, annihilate negative spirits. Annihilate negative spirits. So that's a special dance which you do with the whole body. And it's beautiful. So, and when she does, when, coming back to Reina, so when my healer, Reiki healer does it, I'm completely in a bliss. I'm, I just discovered my 3D thinking is completely not existent. I can't even think anything. I'm still awake, awake and aware, but any type of chatter and thinking disappears. I'm not thinking logically anymore. And, and that's beautiful. So I invite um, Michelle, if you can show maybe specific movements. Uh, yeah, by the way, <clears throat> if you're a beginner Reiki, I would recommend not doing it on people right away. Do it only if you feel cold. But say I feel should. like 21 day cleanse to yourself with Reiki is super important. I, I literally think that is utterly the kindest thing you can do for yourself and everyone else. <laughs> what, what is that? Can, can you explain? Um, my first teacher, when I did the first one, we did a 21 day cleanse. Like, i.e., I do Reiki on myself every day. And I sit with my feelings so that I can, now that I have been attuned to Reiki, now that I have been given this gift and these symbols into my aura, now I let it work through me to get rid of the toxic nature that resides within me. And so I had 21 days of like crying and flu and like just all manner of nonsense, just like clearing before you go to the next step. Because, like, you've got a, a person I need. I, I like it because I feel it's important to get rid of your stuff, to acclimate, let Reiki work on your heart and your issues, etc., before you go willy-nilly giving it around to other people. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. I'm not saying I'm correct. I'm merely saying that's how I feel about it. So, um, yeah, we have to learn about it. I think it was in my training, but I just completely forgot. Yeah, right. I think it's important. Right. It was for me, it definitely changed. And then, it, you know, the time between each, getting each level, mm -hmm. um, so you could acclimate to each level of training. And what was the question you asked me before? Oh, yeah. you wanted me to yeah, show you? Yeah, I wanted to show specific movements uh, for specific purposes. Suppose there is a blockage of energy in uh, in the shoulder. What what movement would you do? Well, you know what? It's not like that for me. Okay. 
Because sometimes I might perceive that, but I'm not super... My third eye is not super, like, showing me stuff all the time, but my hands know what to do, so they just... I let my hands do whatever. I feel magnetically drawn to a place. Like, I will feel through the air and the energy and wherever it becomes sparkly or spiky or tingly or something changes, shifts, cold, hot, whatever. Then I kind of hover, and then my hands... I create... Okay, so one of the things I do is I create. Like, okay, say I get to your heart, and you know how we have all these cords and all these attachments, and so I have create a thing for me in my mind. What is the best way for me to gather all these cords and attachments? So I decided to spool. So for a while I was spooling them up, and I was like, hey, why do I got to crank the spool? Why can't I have a double spool? and have them on electric motors already collecting all this stuff. And then we're going to gather all the spools <laughs> out of the heart <laughs> or out of the spine or whatever, you know, like, I mean, I just kind of, like, things occur to me, like, how do you handle this? So I create a way that I perceive my intention is this, and I design a way that I like or that resonates with me, so sometimes my hands look like I'm spooling up all the all those cords going into your heart from all the people that you're thinking about or interacted with on this dimension and every other one or whatever. So that looked like that for a while, but that now it's like, nope, these are electric and they're gathering all of them up. And now we're going to put them together and we're going to yank them out maybe. I don't know, like the other day I drew... A square, I drew, I could see like yellow light. I was like, then I drew the two connectors and then I drew a square again. And so now it was a cube. I put a big handle in it. I grabbed both hands and I yanked it up and I sent it to source. <laughs> Clap, break it. You know, it's very intuitive. So it's different for every person. There's like no one thing. Wow. So, because the mind, thoughts, and words are powerful, our intentions are powerful, all I want to do, I don't need to know what's wrong with people, like, that I, I don't feel, I am not a medical doctor, I don't, you know, this is not my job. My job is to be a conduit to give you the healing, and I know that the people who are giving me the healing to give the person are in charge, and they know exactly where it needs to go, and I don't have to be bothered about it. So all I have to do is be the willing person. That's how it feels for me. Like, my instructor is much, much more, like, she's been doing it for 20-some years, and she can literally tell, like, exactly what it is and what it looks like and whatever. Oh, that's another thing. This is very important. Um, and she knows how to get rid of... So I watch some of her stuff, and some of her stuff I co-opted, like, you know, with the psychic surgery, with the Reiki fingers. Um, um, oh, I was going to tell you, this is neat. She allows the people she works on, with their words and their own construct of what they're feeling, does it have a shape? Does it have a texture? Does it have a temperature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it have a color? Where is it in the body? Um, so, for instance, I will say, like, the last time when I was getting my Reiki Master teacher, that she worked with me on, it was my turn. And I had a clear lucite box blocking my throat chakra. It was, it was so imperceptible. It was barely perceptible. And I finally goes like, wait a minute, I feel like there's a box, but I don't see anything. But, oh, it's like lucite, or it's like clear. So it's like, mm. and then she's a very powerful healer, and I black out when bad stuff is, comes up for me. <laughs> like I just literally see black. <laughs> and then I cry a lot. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like everybody brings something to the table, learning, learning 
the regular way is the beginning and it might be the way you always do it or a person always does it and that is excellent too because all the energy is beautiful and healing so it doesn't really matter if I do different I don't even know what to call it or how to teach it because it's never the same and and I'm sorry I can't be more specific <laughs> I will tell you that I do imagine um, other people's I always want to purify each chakra I want to connect each chakra in balance with each other chakra so I connect with the infinity symbol I like to start off balancing both hemispheres opening it up, bringing the white healing light through. Now we're going to blast the chakras, blast until it feels the right color, and bring it in. A chakra is supposed to be the size of a fist, I was taught, so that's what I do. And then I do it to the next one, and then I connect them as they go down. This is my way. This does not mean it's a, the way. <laughs> it is a way. There are many ways. Just like there are many ways to... God or heaven or whatever it is the same with healing there are many ways and they're all perfect also right amazing yes amazing I I, I like all, all you said give us a tone in <laughs> there's bing bongs I don't know I hear lots of okay Oh, I am, I am, 
Uh, interesting when you did your hand movements. Um, Slava posted about two, three weeks ago on the Hukola uh, Russian two ladies of my age uh, doing the dual duet, dual uh, duo Tonian. And they, they have they have the ex they come from different culture. I, I don't know what from what culture they come from. It's not Russian, not anything. And they do very similar head movements. When they do the, that, it, it's it seems like a culture. It doesn't seem like it is improvised. It is a, a cultural thing which comes, I guess, from one of alien cultures. That's what my understanding is. I invite more questions and comments. Okay, I have a question for uh -huh. everybody. Does anybody else feel like they get like tased by laser beams all the time? What does it mean, tased? Okay, imagine I have a ray gun in a movie. Like I'm in a movie that has a ray gun and a laser comes out of it and fires at you. Uh -huh. I feel like sometimes I will feel lasers and they're very specific, either like working on me in my chakras or parts of my body or they will come out of my fingertips or out of my hands it will be very specific very small points of light and I will be able to sense the thickness and the color and sometimes it feels like it's binary so it will have like maybe a staccato kind of like ding 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 Ding, ding, long, ding, ding, long, ding, ding, long, or weird things like that. Yes, for ting, ting, yes. Not for lasers. I <clears throat> there are rays coming off out of my fingers, but they are not. The laser property is consistent, narrow beam of the same width, straight, and the ones which come from my fingers are bent, and they kind of. Like turning around and not consistent, consistent wheels. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, the sensation of ding, 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 like some kind of pulse somewhere, yeah, often, yeah. Anybody else? You mentioned the, that sound of lower vibration, like which you get in your body, like, oh. Oh, I, yeah, it's I just good. Yes, I, I, I get it, and I often was, like, in the past, I was looking for outside source. Maybe there is something outside of me which makes it, and I experimented and figured out it's not coming from outside, it's from inside me. And recently, like, a couple of days ago, I, in, in a certain book, there was a mention that it is a known source, known sound of a certain chakra. I don't remember which of the chakras it is. But it's one of the three lower chakras that makes that noise. But it comes in my mind, so that's all I know. Like, oh. like um, it's like a, uh, I think that's the root chakra. That is my perception. Yep, something of that sort. Yep, yeah, root. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm not like saying I have all the answers. <laughs> it's just my perception. Uh huh. Comments, questions. Welcome, new uh, Johannes and Blue. Amron. It's Amron. So we should discuss. Hello, everyone. And Michelle, your toning was great. Oh, it's very strong and centering. Mm, I'm not in charge of it either. 
I'm not in charge of that either. Somebody else it's is doing it. You. It's a part of you, so. <laughs> and hello, Jim. Hello, everyone. Uh, all right, that will be Jim today. <laughs> uh, that's not Jim. That's Max. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Max. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I have seen you a lot in Hukulo, so I. Thank you. Yeah, Max. That was Max. I have seen a lot of your <clears throat> videos, so this was great. Thank you. I'm happy what you what you do. It has helped. It has helped me. It helped me to come into this. Um, yeah, to know so many people and know all all about the aliens, UFOs, and so on. Thank you. Um, what is your <clears throat> challenge today in terms of spiritual and healing development? What what are you working on today? Well, today I worked on, or I work on, I work on my emotional sides, my emo emotional body. In I, I have healing to do there. So the healing I do, you could say it's, it's a kind of vis visualization and kind of mantras that I do or letting go of things that need to be let go of gaining that freedom that we need so that's the kind of feeling I do on myself connecting with the center point nice yeah emotions is something interesting something new to me I I use them you know of course, we we had them and we use them all the time. And um, sometimes they per perceived to be as useless, and sometimes they perceive to be as extremely useful and something which is very fundamental. But uh, I guess both both answers are correct. Um, I understand the emotions. They're not necessary for some aliens. They kind of got rid of them genetically, like grays got rid of the emotions, and then uh, now they rediscover that there is some value in them, right? At least, you know, I think historically the, the Zetas removed a lot of emotions, just genetically excised the emotions from their genetic design, so they don't have the emotion of anger, uh, other strong emotions, but they still have the emotion of panic. It's like very strong in them. Panic and tragedy. So all greys have that panic and tragedy emotion. And that makes them do things which we wouldn't do, right? <laughs> it's the, the sense of, you know, we have to survive right now. You know, our species is dying, so we'll do something because of that. Um, I don't know if it's a very useful emotion, you know. I, I would say not, it has to be also under control. Um, but in any way, as I understand, I, I use a lot of emotions as tags for things, and that allows multitasking. Uh, so I tag a lot of information with emotions intentionally. I, so that person will be tagged as that emotion. That person will be tagged as that emotion. That piece of food will be ta tagged, tagged as emotion. That piece of abstract knowledge will be tagged as emotion. And then when I need to solve the problem, I will tune into certain emotional tags and emotional vibrations, and that will bring into my field of view what is needed. So I use these vibrations for for thinking. So it's more like some handy tool for analytical thinking. And it allows to bring analytical, uh, not analytical, discovery, creative thinking into, into multitask, multitasking into, it allows to bring multitasking into creative thinking. So basically you tune into the way. What does, what does? Labeling their pieces of information with emotions. So confused. It's like oh. like if you see someone and you you are fearing this p person, and then you see another person and you feel relaxed with him or her, then you have some definitions 
in yourself oh. that you need to work on. I think that's what that's how I understood it. Okay, I thought we were talking about mantras. <laughs> oh no no emotions emotions. Okay. All right. So uh, the process is the such. I uh, when I do my thinking and kind of classify things, I would attach to every piece of knowledge a certain vibration, which I think is the same nature of emotional vibration. And I will put it in the shelf randomly, like completely randomly, uh, just labeling with a certain vibration. Now, when I need to solve the problem, I would project a certain wave, which would attract what is aligned with those, with this wave, and it will give me a creative answer. And it's completely logical, it's completely intuitive. So I use emotions for intuitive thinking, but it is kind of intentional, intentional process. In that, I calibrate what, what are the labels, vibrational labels for the facts, and I calibrate r the randomnicity of things, and I allow tons of randomnicity in my thinking, like I allow lots of randomnicity. I, you know, let's bring something from random. Like, you know, let's when I draw the picture, let's grab something completely random and throw it on the on the picture or on the solution. Like, if I'm stuck in solution, let's grab something random and push it there. For example, I do Reiki and I'm stuck with understanding what I'm supposed to do. My idea: let's grab something random, hmm, a pyramid, put it here and see how their intuitive picture develops. Or let's create a wave, as Michelle mentioned, creative wave, a tone, like zzz, random tone, and see how the picture will clarify, evolve, that is a word, manifest. And um, yeah, that's, that's practical utilization of emotions. I don't know. I, I believe tons of people think logically and ton, tons of people pe think otherwise, but you know, for me it's, it's natural. It comes for, uh, for many years. And now I understand when I bring that randomicity, it's invitation for the spirit to enter as well. So randomicity equals the spirit for me right now. Um, another way is just how to deal with negative emotions and um, you know, the idea of crying out the emotions is new to me. I'm still experimenting with it, but it works just to cry, to weep out, and to block negative emotions and block the anger and convert it to excitement. That's, you know, that I learned from Bashar. And... I practice that a lot. Yeah, as soon as I notice the anger, as soon as I notice the fear, I just would block it and then transform it. So <laughs> that's that's about it. That's my my uh, contribution. I invite more comments and questions. Well, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm also loving Bashar, how, how Bashar says that we should approach a, a, let's say, a challenge or a problem. And if, if we have something we need to work on, on our emotional body, let's say we are, we have not taken care of one side of us that always had, had been in the darkness, then we should go into that and, and look for what has caused it and what has, why is it there, what, what we should do with with that um, side of us. So yeah. All right. Just yeah. what I'm thinking, how to approach things. When what I do it, about it. Yeah. When I'm doing the healing, um, yeah, I'm looking for those on other people. I'm looking for those blockages, fears, things that cause strong emotional response and gently try to, it, it really helps to understand what's, what's happening. Uh, of, often someone would be perfect in many senses and then in one place he would, he or her would have a strong rejection of something. 
and that would point to their lesson they're learning or to the lesson they refuse to learn. Yeah, usually it's a lesson that they refuse to learn. And um, it's harder to, to apply it to yourself. <laughs> you know, when you, when you yourself have that strong rejection, fear, blockage, then it's painful to go there, right? But, sure. you know, you know, it's, uh, I guess, just to realize that that's something to work on is, is, uh, is, is the first step. So if you feel like, oh, that, that is a, that thing I really hate, there I never go, maybe that is the place to at least mark for the future exploration. But yeah, but uh, on the other hand, there is so many positive blockages, like blocking the television, blocking the news, blocking uh, channels of negative influence, you know, to, to stay to stay purified and high, you have to block the dirt, right? So, so blocking the dirt is okay. To wash away the dirt, you don't have to swim in a swamp, right? You you go to a nice beach and uh, clean yourself up, and then so on, or nice uh, spring and um, and purify yourself. So the the hatred of dirt is is okay. Yeah, true, true. I am Now it's a good point for this to discuss uh, sexual energy. Do you have any comments and questions and statements about sexual energy? Well, that I know that it's being very much misused today. <laughs> okay. Oh, of course, absolutely. All right. Um, misuse of sexual energy. Um, just a recent understanding of mine was that everybody is so different. It's really hard to apply some universal rules here. And the main thing, like from spiritual perspective, some people lessons with sexuality could be right on your path in your contract. So avoiding the sexuality might be not a good idea. Maybe you're supposed your life path is to experience it, transform it, and so on. And from some, for, for other people it would be other way around. You're, you already maybe learned the lessons or not supposed to, so staying away from sexuality may be just fine. Right, so it's really different, and the timing of it also is could be so different for for different people. Timing of the flow. Um, so it's it's really hard to to get give a universal prescription. Uh, abstinence was something very new to me, as as an idea. I just wasn't exposed too much, and when I was exposed, I didn't really take it seriously. Uh, and when I was asked in the past, it was like a nice webinar with um, Roxy. Uh, we both said, "Yeah, no, absolutely. Why? Why would you abstain from it? It's it's a nice energy. Uh, use it, explore it, and so on." But now I'm I'm exposed to the idea that abstinence 
could lead to good things in spiritual growth. So, so that brings us to the idea that uh, the sexual energy can be used and misused, and the main barometer or main uh, criterion is whether it is moving you up in spiritual growth or down. Apparently, most of our channel sources, that's the, the absolutely the main criterion. They don't really care, don't really value the experience other than from the perspective of your spiritual growth. So if it raises your harmony, if it raises your chakra level, the main, uh, the energy of higher chakras, that's great. If it lowers your vibration, that's not so great. That's so simple. So then I just realized, so when we say sexuality, for me it would be very different <laughs> from, from, than from many others. Um, for many others, the sexuality is the root chakra, root chakra vibration and second chakra vibration, like they were really down there. And for me, maybe it's, uh, it's right there. Like for me, most sexual thing is, is crown chakra. <laughs> You know, I, uh, you know, first four chakras are so sexual to me, and lower three chakras, you know, but there's no sex there. It's just dirt. <laughs> I, I don't mean it. It's actually a joke. No, it's not dirt, but it is something uh, not very interesting that much for me. It's kind of the heart chakra, their vibration of the female breast is interesting. It has its own energy, feeding energy, motherly energy, and um, the kissing, the voice, the hearing, the vision, the eyes, their uh, third eye connection, the crown connection, their whole head idea is uh, high vibrational. So, so for me the sex is a tool to, to get high. At least the tool and also the understanding, raising up and staying there. So, on the other hand, again, um, there is an idea of abstinence and staying away from it, or lowering the frequency. Like, you know, if you want to do a channeling session, do you want to stay away from sex for a short period of time? It would be a different period for different people, but Apparently there is, at least for, for males, I don't know, for females it would be a little different, but for males it would be a different pattern, a different a certain pattern of energy maybe going down, maybe going up, maybe getting to up to the level where, where it becomes, makes you unstable, and makes, makes you unstable might cause real fall in the energy. So healthier, healthy frequency and healthy understanding of specific timing is important. And that is new to me, I'm not very good in that. Um, raising the vibration. Yes, the, the sex as a interaction also could be very different in terms of are you, the balance are you how much do you give and how much do you get back and how much do you exchange sometimes you get back so much you are high for years right and sometimes you get away so much that you are low for years right years is artificial, like I really don't want to put a real time because time is different for different people. I, I observe now lots of uh, young people and not so young people who are absolutely not interested in sex and uh, it surprises me but I think uh, initially surprises me but I think it's just a stage for, for the humanity to to go through like 
as a collective, human collective, as spirit collective, collective human consciousness. I think the humanity already explored the idea of sex so much that it became boring for the spirits. And um, they just... I was thinking that, you know, my higher self wants me to experience that, that, and that because they enjoy that. Apparently, they, the messages I get, you know, it's, it's, it's only, they approve it only because it's necessary for my development. But what they value is the product which really has nothing to do with sex. They want me to graduate into a higher spiritual shape structure, vibration, harmony, and sexual development is just part of it. You have to like become whole, build, grow, manifest your spirit body and that is part of the growth. So the fact that lots of humans still play this game of sex is just the choice and it's part of the delusion and maybe some of it is necessary and some of that is excessive. So, so it's a very interesting question to ask different aliens and spirits what they think. Uh, a typical question I ask to new aliens, I would, I would ask them, do you find humans sexually attractive? And 100% of them answer, oh no, not at all. <laughs> right. Um, and especially Yael, they said, you know, all what you do with sex is so, I think that word would be repugnant, but I'm not sure. Repulsive. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> Any comments, questions here? No. Yeah. One thing I've learned, we have manipulated, discontorted, and whatever for sexuality so much. And thank you for that viewpoint, Blue. What we are supposed to use it for, because it is a primal energy, is to create that which we need on a spiritual level. That's just my viewpoint on it. As a healing practitioner, we also use that same energy to raise the vibration of the attunement of a client so that it goes in a little bit better. Hence the 21-day requirement to bring it back into themselves on their own. Wow. That's my viewpoint on it. What did you say? Last the last sentence I missed. It, it's his viewpoint. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I also think about it. I mean, for me, sexual energy and sex is is to is to connect people together and connect by connecting ourselves together energetically we connect to God to the source and when we do it it's that energy it has to be exchanged between us and not it has to be two-way energy exchange and not one and that this is also my way, viewpoint on it that it's one way to connect to God with it and one way to reach that that kind of that and spiritual state of being. Thank you. Um, no question. Everything is created of the same energy. Everything created from the same um, essence. Everything created from the Creator. So we are penetrated with the same vibration. Uh, with my analytical side, I want to make a better definitions, and I 
kind of cannot come up with a good words, but with a good def defining titles. But I'm it, my intention is acknowledge that unity between different types of energy that you know seeing the sexual energy in completely asexual things like chemistry, right? Uh, scientific chemistry or botany or whatever or geology is like water is feminine right um, but I guess we, I would use the term human sexuality referring to earth humans earth earth human sexuality mainstream sexuality not not necessarily mainstream biological sexuality how about that biological sexuality versus How do you call it? Universal, spiritual sexuality, beyond body sexuality, metaphysical sexuality. Hmm. So I don't have a good word for that. But I would, in my thinking, I would be clear. I'm talking about one or another, and not necessarily merge them together. They they are made of the same substance, of of course. But you know, I would rather treat them differently, because. You know, sexuality of electron is a little different than sexuality of and then the human sexuality. There is some anal analogy, like chemical love between two atoms. They love each other and form a perfect bonding. Or some atoms are promiscuous and they would love <laughs> they would bind to anyone. And some atoms are have collective sex, like metal ones. They share the electrons, they're all one, they have hive mind, right? So it's nice analogy, it's made of the same on the same principles, but really my uh, focus on my thinking is it's really exciting. I'm thinking about 50% of the time about it, about human sexuality, what what to think about it, or how to deal with it, because it's one of the main or like three major motivating forces here like survival sex reproduction health creativity blah 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 I and mean, there are it's one of the main basic basic moving things and what do you do with it especially when you like until even until now i still find it the main purpose of sexuality to make children, right? So for me, any time I was thinking about sex, it was how good it will, will be the child. Uh, the ch child was always present in any sexual thinking of me, which is very unusual, right? Some people like they're completely blocked from the idea of, of reproduction while thinking about sex. And uh, I guess it's not only my idea, but for me, like looking at any sexually attractive image, no, not image, live person would be, okay, what kind of child would be produced then? And how would she look as a grandmother? <laughs> and uh, and then, oh no, that that path is completely like, out of question, right? So it's not only me. There are people who think that far, but um, but not anymore, right? So there is lots of other ways of looking at that. Lots of other ways of looking at that. And what about the sexual attraction between completely non-fertile people, right? Like males or people who grew out of fertile age or who are not physically capable of producing children. There is still that humans, not only universal metaphysical sexuality, but also human sexuality involved. So, so again, again, as I understand, it's we are here on our own. The spirits help us only because it helps our spiritual growth. And they're not that interested in that. And when I talk to aliens, they don't give much advice. They understand things from spiritual perspective, but they are not interested, involved in that sexual thinking. 
and when I speak to spirits, they have their own tr human dis disconnect spirits. They have their own prejudice, which is not necessarily corresponding to our mindset. And angels were the most um, helpful, helpful, most helpful. They really can relate. So I, I really love that help and I appreciate that help. Starter, would, would you like to comment anything? Yeah, actually, I think we're pretty much done because it, now it's just you and me. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. It's uh, all right. Uh, I, I block any fear here. <laughs> I can talk to myself. Really. And oh, we are, we are hey. still recorded. Yay. Surely we are talking about sex, human sex. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? I completely forgot I had a client. <laughs> so, so you already finished your session? I did, yeah. It was uh, yeah, it was like a beauty beauty session actually. So yeah. Thank you much for coming back. Okay, so what so sex, let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> uh, no, I had a plan to speak for two hours, and I don't see any reason to stop before that. Uh, I, I intend to make this webinar uh, class more or less periodically regular. So um, right now it's like we have a few people, but that, that room can fit up to 25. So, so my intention is to have it popular and periodic and get it going. Yeah, that's I'm, uh, and it's, it was a good time as well. Yeah, I, I might I might go into channeling state, but right now it's my interest intention to stay to stay in my body and keep talking from uh, from my own perspective. I think uh, I learn a lot, and also I uh, that's a sound in place where I can sound my um, um, what is what is brooding in my mind. Which is healing in itself. Right? Yes, absolutely. That is true. Yes. Uh, there was a. I, I'm going to change the subject, if I may. Absolutely. Uh, just a little bit about the healing thing. I wanted to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, uh, recently I had a, a Kundalini Reiki attunement. It was actually via, online via somebody on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that you could have something like that, but it but it's really worked, and my and my body's really res responding to it to it energetically wise. You know, when I when I say uh, Kundalini Reiki meditation or whatever, I can start feeling the energy come through, and it and it it feels it feels much stronger than Usui Reiki for me at the moment where I am at the moment. So, but I don't really understand what Kundalini Reiki is and how you um, apply it for healing somebody else. Can you explain it to me at all? Can't hear you. I'm sorry, I don't. I my teacher Barbara Carlton teaches it, but but I didn't take the class. I completely blank on it I'm sorry okay. I know the word I can I can feel it though and I think what it does is I I think what it does is it makes you feel it can make you feel very grounded but it makes you feel like it's made me feel more alive because I think the Kundalini is about awakening up your senses so the senses to eat and to feel and and all that, I sort of feel like I'm able to, I'm expressing myself more and I'm enjoying food more, all those sort of the senses, the pleasures of the senses, I think that's what it does, that it heightens everything. Uh -huh. um, is it the same thing as Kundalini rising? Am I talking about something I know? Ah, yeah, yeah I, I mean I think so because it's all about the the snake rising in your body, so, um, yeah. I experienced the Kundalini rising, and uh, 
but it didn't get complete to complete uh, ecstasy. It didn't come get to. So there is that spine, which is a resonator, and there is an electric impulse going through the spine, through from the brain to the spine through the nerves. It's electric conductors, and they have insulation, myelin layer of insulation. But as that happens, there is and there are cells in the spine. They are called dorsal ganglia, uh, which have DNA. So there is like that cord also have tons of DNA in it. And as I understand, DNA is getting activated by this electric pattern of vibration. And DNA becomes a transdimensional portal, which opens the connection to higher dimensions. And that connection happens through their point between the brows and the uh, point uh, pineal gland in the brain. Um, but I didn't get to that to that opening point. So the raising goes from the bottom up and it has to get the here and you get you have to get, connect to the uh, the source God divine mother directly. So that's the purpose of Kundalini awakening and I didn't achieve it yet. <laughs> Does that just happen whenever, or do you uh, consciously make it happen? You know, consciously. Right. Happen? For some people, it happens just like that. And uh, we had someone shared in our webinar that for him it happened because he's in very good physical shape, and he was doing sports and practicing certain exercises. And after these exercises, it just happened for him. So for him, it was first step of spiritual awakening, the Kundalini rising. Uh, for others, it is a lifelong work to, to achieve that. You have to have a certain physical health, certain posture, certain meditation. And as it rises, you enjoy it. You're not afraid. Because he was scared by this. He was thinking he's getting sick. And as you grow, you should be able to incorporate it and get this dimensional opening and it opens certain portals and, and then you can repeat it as an experience and that can make your more high vibration to reconnect to your spirit in a higher way. So we're, it, it of course, you know, being open to it, not to be afraid and to be um, helping that rising, I think is, is a great idea. And it can happen with sex, or it happened without sex, it's uh, it's both uh, a possibility. But again, I'm I'm new to that. It's something which I I have to learn the theory as well. I'm not theoretically well versed in this. And when you, I mean, back in '99, I believe that I had a big I had a big spiritual awakening then, and there was a time where. And I don't know if this is to do with Kundalini rising, but there was a time when my whole body would shudder, like as if there was a little mini earthquake going on. Uh huh. And I uh, would turn around to my partner and say, "Did you feel that? Like the earth's trembling?" But I could feel it within inside myself. Did you have? Did you ever experience those sort of feelings? Yes. Yeah. So I wonder whether that was the the Kundalini then. But I don't know where it's gone to. I think it's different, but again, I'm not well well versed in this. I think it's different, but yes, it's also something spiritual, absolutely. Yeah, some some days I have the vibration coming up like really strong. Yes, and sometimes it's a, an earthquake too. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm yeah. I, I felt few earthquakes, but it's kind kind of yeah. Yeah, you, you feel like brrr, and then... Yeah, that's it. That's how I felt. It was like, brrr, brrr, like a little trembling going on mm -hmm. in the body. Yeah, we just discussed it seems like it's one of the two root chakras, first or second, producing that sound. And it goes into your head. And some days it's, you know, I, I always have like that high, high pitch. I, and I, and it, on top of it, there is like that... Brrr, 
And do you hear that during the day or just at night when it's quiet? I um, during the day, if I tune into it, if I just kind of let me tune into it right now, yeah, it's there, it's there. But usually, you notice it during the meditation. I have several meditations during the day, and that's where sometimes my attention goes to it. And sometimes it was some days it was so high that it's it was like bothering me. But now it's kind of more filtered out. It, I can tune into it, but I can tune out of it, so it's not interfering with anything. But the high pitch is always there, and okay, high pitch is 70% time of there, and low pitch is maybe 3% time there. But it's it comes right here, and uh, uh, attributing it to you know, who is doing that, it's interesting. Is it me doing that, or is it aliens doing that? Is it uh, the spiritual upgrade? But I think you, I'm thinking about a very positive. It, it, it is therapeutic. I, I like it. it. It is an upgrade, and it's also therapeutic. Yeah, I suppose if you're not fearing it, and you sort of... Oh, yeah, some people go to, doc to the doctor and ask them to heal them from that, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I... Uh, the the high pitch sound, I, I think what it is, it is opening of your ear chakra, okay, whatever it is. Uh, it's in between their third eye, between the sixth and the fifth ear chakra. Ear frequency, basically each chakra is a frequency, so ear frequency, opening it spiritually to the spirit world, and you hear all the spirits talking to you at once, that's my understanding. All the spirits, like the radio, untuned radio, it's all the spirits talking to you at once. And then you learn to filter only one yeah. of them to get to understand. Jeez. And the tool for that is purification and focus of focus of your own perception. So you want to focus your perception on one thing. Give yourself one single tone, and then as you have single tone, single focus, one point, then you get the single answer. And to do that, you focus on the point, the one which Indian mark with red dot, between your brows a little bit higher, maybe a few millimeters higher. You can feel it here. That is like a little, in the, in the, in the skull there is a little dent. Dent, yeah. And uh, you focus your attention. Some people in the Indian uh, yogi tradition, they actually look at it. So you can really like kind of tr close your eyes and look at it, or open your eyes and look at it. I don't necessarily focus my eyes because it's a strain on your eyes to look that at that point. But my consciousness focus, my me, so me goes there. It's like yeah, yeah. I am in my mind, in my in my mind, I'm there. And sometimes it drifts apart, but I'm kind of focus it in one point, one ball, little ball right here. So that brings your your focus there, and also vocal and mental um, at one note also brings you there. And uh, the intention is, Divine Mother, I want to reconnect with you. I want to c reconnect with you. That's, that's the intention. And then you just stay in that as long as you can. And some people can stay in that intention for many hours, like 10 hours, but in yoga tradition. But for me, it would be like 35 minutes of meditation. But part of that meditation, I'm there. So as you get there, you... You, you, you purify yourself and then you get less noise. And if you have questions, again, the question helps because, you know, just asking the spirits, give me something is yeah. often insufficient. You want your intention to be very specific. What answer do you want? And then you get that answer. Yeah, I'm starting to learn that now. Because I think at the beginning you're just excited, aren't you? You're excited. Uh -huh. 
hearing anything. So it's like, oh, I just, uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to hear anything or whatever, you know. But I, I think that when you start developing this relationship, then it's like, okay, well, what, what is it that you'd like to know? Or you need to start keying in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Often I'm in the meditation or in the dream, and I realize, oh, I'm there, I'm conscious. I am flying, I'm with the spirit, and just that realization, logical realization, this world is like, you fall down in your vibration. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, being there matter-of-factly, like, all right, I'm working here. <laughs> uh, that's okay, I'm here, fine. Oh, this place, okay, I'm there with God, fine. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 uh, normalcy, normality of being there uh, actually helps to, to stay there. You just remember that you belong there and then yeah. uh, just don't get too excited. Get excited right to the proper level and then you stay there and do your work and just realize that level and that work is not translated, not easily translatable to human language or completely untranslatable to human logic. So whatever you experience there cannot be brought back in uh, understanding, 3D understanding. It has to be remain in uh, high D understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask another question? And then, and then, is that okay, Raymond? Absolutely, and uh, yeah, we're starting to wrap up, yes. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask, you know, like, Every month or every week, you can get, uh, you can be uh, attracted to different colors. And you were talking about the chakras. Yes. Why, why is it that, say, one month I, you can really like blue, and then the next month you really need red? What does that actually mean? Have you got a lack of something? In is it that you need to work? Uh, in that area, work with that chakra more. Is that what it means? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was first playing with Windows, I think the first time when first Windows allowed you to change the color of the background of the desktop, <laughs> it was many years ago, and I would find the perfect color, absolutely perfect color, and I would stay with it for a month, and then next month I would think, mm, no, it's not as perfect as I was thinking. Let's change it to another color, and uh, and as as the year goes, I realize when I come back to the same month of the year, my favorite color returns to that original color. So I think it's it it has to do with the zodiac cycle. Okay. It's one one of the things the zodiac cycle. Like there's a pattern. Yeah, there is certain evol evolution during the year, and as breathing your vibration changes, the planets change, so your dominant color varies. Um, and uh, I would just take it easy. It would give you some clue, you know, what chakra is most active at the moment. And I just realized that you can monitor your favorite chakra during the day, during, it changes with time during the day. And like recently, I was in human colony. It's not anywhere else. In human colony, somebody posted something about the politics, and I became involved in that. And then it just lowered my vibration right away. Like next hour, I was like, "Wait a second, where am I? Why am I seeing things and thinking about things which I never pay attention to?" Mm -hmm. Oh, I stepped into politics, and I opened a few windows of that nonsense, right? So, you know, I explored it a little bit, but then I kind of intended and purified myself back to my normal state because it was disturbing and unhealthy for me. It was not where I want to be. So, um, yeah, monitoring where you are and where you want to be, I think, is, is, a, is a part of spiritual hygiene. So if you find that you are too much in the certain color, maybe it's indicative, you know, do you really want to be there? Or is it just happened 
for a while and do want to shift up. And it's not necessarily only a color. There are sounds, there are smells. It's all uh, symbolic. It doesn't have to be the, all, all the time. And uh, you can easily switch if you like. And you just explore and see where you want to be and what do you want to explore. Because it's just a tool. It's just, you uh, know, uh, you're multidimensional. So it's your choice where to focus your attention. I yell na 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 I think it was good timing because we were discussing should we stop or we continue. So thank you for bringing a couple more questions. <laughs> I can end with a blessing if you wish. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, let me just close the door. Sure. I'm a bit shy. <laughs> so. okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm learning though. I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting there. There's more than I've ever done. Anyway. Okay. Go ahead. Shy. <laughs> Instead of shy, being shy, shine. Shine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nahrahe me ketene nikeri anana kete ise seria matari apuku. Na he he rima aula ho he o koto no no koto to ya ebi kete ise ria apuka. La ha haria makata na ike tete neria ka ohla he ebi kete ria pakata na ni ebi kutu nusu mutu. Na he he ria makata ria ta he he ria se seria makaula ya me kete ria pakaure ebi kete nike. And the Gedria Nana Naka Yes, Sisseria Mala Nahara Mangara Yeria Nana Nakataria Mala Nana Mono Susurio Mokotorio Nakataya Naha Arian and then inherited the Gedri Sisseria Pacata. Ehege Te Nehnekateria Nana Kata. Okay, that's it. Ogalahana kuna mahala kaju kadaya kada kana kodaya na hala makana ola kada mana kana ona yamana honda tura kana mana kana na mana kada ora da yakada o da yakada kekada gola na da kada gayo kada arahuna yamana yana 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 o gada yana ola gada yana. Um, Star, do you want to uh, add anything? May the information gathered, received, and blessed be transmitted for all of us to be. May those who hear these messages be blessed as well. And may this help humanity to ascend to where Creator wants us to be. With His grace, Amen. 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 The the light is coming. The beauty of light is immense. The doors are unlocked. It's up to you to open them and to get the light in. The windows are unlocked. Just open them and get the lights in. There is so much beauty streaming to you. It's up to you to open your perception to the beauty which is endless and abundant.
whatever helps you to open yourself to the beauty of the creation, use this tools, feel free to use these tools. Your path is blessed. Your abilities are unlimited. You are infinite. So feel free to awaken to your infinity. Amen. Amen. How do I mute Shirley? I muted her. There is no way to unmute, I guess. Shirley, you have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry for muting you, but there is a feedback. Yay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say it was lovely to meet you both. I haven't, I haven't actually met you, Max. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very new here, and I've only been to a couple of Jim's webinars, so, and I haven't seen you around, so it was nice meeting you, and Raymond as well. I've seen you in the webinars, but I haven't spoken to you, so it was really nice meeting you both. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Raymond. Um, thank nice you. to meet you both, and thank you for co-creating this class. Um, Let's come together soon. I will announce more classes soon. Um, it was very helpful to have that exchange with you, and I hope to build on that. And my our future viewers, we welcome you and join us in the future webinars. Our site is humancolony.org, and right there on the front page, or any page actually, there is there are links to the future events. Have a good day and um, enjoy their beauty streaming to you. Good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.